Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about, I'm going to give you some ideas on things that you can get your children to do to help them unwind and to relax. When a child is at school all day long, they need some time to come home and just decompress. Adults need to do that as well. If you live in an area that has great weather all year round, by all means, get them to the park or get them outside playing with their friends or doing something before they sit down and start doing their homework. Right before they go to bed at night is another time that you want to help them unwind and relax to get ready for bed and so that they won't have a lot of problems with insomnia and not being able to sleep. So let me give you some uh, different things that you can do and provide materials for your kids to unwind and relax. The first one is doodling. Now, I don't know if you lived in the same generation as I did, but I remember my parents saying, stop doodling and get to work. Okay, well actually doodling is work. A few years ago I came across this book, Totally Tangled. Now one thing, I'm not an artist, I wish I was. I. I studied art, I actually got my undergraduate degree in art, and I remember falling in love with art history, and I still couldn't draw even after I graduated. I, I did an emphasis in design, but I always wished that I could draw. Well, when I came to Totally Tangled, they show some very simple, fun ways that anybody can doodle. And all you need is some cardstock paper and a Sharpie pen. Now, if you want to get the actual cards and everything that they use, you can go to Michael's and they actually have them in little packets that you can buy. But it's just coloring and doodling and, and creating patterns that are black and white. This image that I have up is my son, Brandon. Uh, one way that he recognized that he needed to unwind is he doodled. And I never taught him or talked to him about totally tangled or tangling as they call it. He just created his own. And what I did is I gave him cardstock paper and Sharpie pens and pencils and pe regular pens. And he just spent over a period of several weeks creating these little doodles. And it was an incredible way for him to relax, particularly after he got home from school. Along with this is coloring. Okay, when I was a child, we had all different kinds of coloring books, and then it went through a period of time where they bad mouth, psychologists bad mouth coloring books because they were taken away from the creativity of the child and they shouldn't have to keep inside the lines and blah, 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 blah. Well, coloring books have made a comeback. You know, kind of what goes around comes around. So now you can get all these different types of amazing coloring books. They're, they're sold just about every place. And you can get the gel pens and you can color. And this is great for somebody like me who would love to be able to draw something fabulous that was hanging in the Louvre. But unfortunately, I can do something easy like tangling or coloring. And it actually, they have found that it's extraordinarily relaxing to both kids and adults. So think about that. Think about coloring as well. Now, there's also any kind of drawing, any time that you can um, either put butcher paper on the wall and your kids draw vertically or you hand them paper, a, a pad of paper with all kinds of pins and crins and markers and everything. Drawing is extremely important. Now let me tell you a, a really powerful story. This is called Fireflies in the Dark. It's the story of an artist who was trained in the Baja in Europe. Her name was Friedel Dicker Brandes. She was also a trained artist in terms of art therapy for kids. She was put into the Terezin um, concentration camp in Czechoslovakia. And when she was packing her bags to go there, they, e they could each take 60 pounds. She had the feeling that she should take lots of art supplies, that there would be children in there and that they would need them. So that's pretty much what she packed. And she was absolutely right. When she came to this horrible concentration camp, the people that she was most concerned about were the children. So she had them spend time. They created this thing in the basement of one of the, the buildings, and they had the children come in, and they had them draw. Then she took their drawings, and she analyzed them at night to see how the children were handling the horrific experience that they had, had been shoved into. The story is 
just amazing. And there was literally, when they went into this concentration camp after the liberation, they literally found in the suitcase hundreds and hundreds of these drawings from these children of different things that they were experiencing and how it was affecting them emotionally. They know now, certainly through art therapists, that art is extremely important for kids. It's a way for them to relax. It's a way for them to unwind. So get the coloring books, get the tangling stuff, get any type of drawing or something for them so that they can draw. Okay, another thing is for an older child, particularly the teen stage, is what's called morning pages. Years ago, I read this book, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, and she talks about morning pages. You know, when you're in the teenage stage, you're going through a lot of changes, bodily changes, changes with the opposite sex, changes with your friends. There's all kinds of things going on. They need to have an outlet of getting all of this out. And you know what? Parents, too. So parents, listen up because you can do this as well. This is what Julia says. She says, each day put your pen to the page and begin writing anything and everything that comes into your mind. And you continue to write for three full pages. Afterwards, she said, you can either keep you know, the stacks of these for a week or a month, and you can throw them away, you can burn them, you can reread them, you can do whatever you want. But the whole idea is to get all of this stuff out of your system that your subconscious may be harboring that is causing you problems, causing you emotional issues and so forth. She's, she said it's a way of just dumping and is a way of also pro, uh, so, problem solving some of the issues that, and different challenges that you're faced with. Think about your teens and introduce this to them. But if you're going to introduce it to them, then do it along with them. The one thing is you're not worried about grammar, you're not worried about spelling, you're not worried about your handwriting, nothing. You're just putting that pen to the page and just writing whatever comes into your mind for three pages. <clears throat> Another thing is exercise. Exercise increases our endorphins. It makes us feel better. Find ways that you and, you and your kids can exercise. Movement is a part of learning. Movement helps our brain. It helps the motor areas of the brain. Take your kids to the park. Take them to a track. Get them involved in sports. Anything that you need to do to get them to move and to exercise. And you as a parent, I've never talked to a person who said that after they exercised, they felt worse. We always feel better by getting out there and getting all of those things in our body working and all those endo endorphins working. Another thing is, <clears throat> while you're doing all these activities, listen to some music. And I would like to suggest that you listen to at least one piece of classical music. I think anything by the Baroque composers and Mozart is fabulous, but one of my very, very favorite pieces piece of music is Beethoven's Violin Concerto in D. It's the only violin concerto that he wrote. It's the most magnificent piece of music that I've ever heard in my life. You know, there's all kinds of music that affect people in different ways, but just try listening to this. Start with the third movement and listen to it. You'll fall in love with it. I've actually heard this played in malls before, if you can believe. But those are some things. And so let me leave you with one other bonus thing that you can do. They're foot baths, and I'm actually going to write a blog about this. But foot baths are really important if you have a child that has so much stress going on in their lives, a high schooler, and they're getting ready to all, for all these exams and everything, and they can't sleep. What you need to do is get the energy from their head down to their feet. So what you want to do is create a foot bath. So get the water as hot as your child can stand, put some Epsom salt in it, and have them soak their feet for about 20 minutes. All the energy from their head will be drained down into their feet, allowing them to relax and to get a really good night's sleep. So again, think about art, think about music, think about movement, think about exercise, think about drawing, coloring, tangling, doodling, all of these things that will help your child unwind and de-stress. And do this instead of those stupid video games that are basically going to cause them to be dumber and it's not going to help their brains, that's for sure. Try these things instead. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.